if there's one thing that this channel has taught me, it's that sometimes Pokemon and other franchises have a great overlap, and one of them is the topic of yokai. There have been plenty of Pokemon already based on yokai, but I want to make more. More! I love yokai. Just how did these designs slap so hard from ancient Japan? And the art of them is just so good. I asked all of you for some suggestions on yokai I should turn into Pokemon, and I got some very good responses, which turned into some of my favorite Pokemon designs kind of ever. So now watch as we turn yokai into Pokemon, like some kind of yokai watch. Hmm, wouldn't it be great if we had some kind of Pokemon like series that were all yokai that one could watch? So we're going to start with the Kasa Obake. I should also say sorry if I pronounce these names terribly. Even with all the Japanese Duolingo I'm doing, I still suck at pronunciation. The Kasa Obake is interesting because it isn't technically like a yokai that spawned due to tails. Despite it being one of the more popular yokai, they don't really have actual accounts of them being seen. And by seen, you know what I mean, like how we see a cat in the distance and think it's a jaguar. I just love that these yokai forms sort of as if it was a character in a story rather than a legend. I've done a Kasu Obake mod before in Beast Paradox Magna Zone, one of the first I did, but I wanted to keep it a bit more true to the depictions of the Kasu Obake in regular appearances. But I still keep a big goofy tongue, I think that's very important for a Kase Obake Pokemon. This one keeps its original parasol design here with the most nonplussed look ever. The kind of look that I'd have if I were as a sick umbrella yokai. I wanted to give it some hands too, but only when needed, so I opted after a few different tries to give it some jagged Kofagriga style shadowy claws that would come out for physical attacks, and also connected the openings to the mouth, and now I can't unsee them talking as if they were a South Park character from Canada. I should apologize that due to their nature, at least half of the mons in this video are ghost type. I don't know why I need to apologize for that, I'm just a good boy. So let's watch this yokai. Kassasol, the umbrella Pokemon of Ghost and Flying type. Found mainly on misty, windy days, Kassasol are said to be Pokemon that were once umbrellas that were left unused for a hundred years and gained a soul. While not particularly nefarious Pokemon, they have a prankster streak. They are known to appear as inanimate umbrellas in the corners of abandoned houses and jump out when picked up, raising the person up to the ceiling and cackling all the while. Some Casasol are known to be friendly spirits and will help retrieve items unfortunately blown away by the wind. Sometimes Casasol are carried away too by this gust and are never seen again. Casasol have the abilities Wind Rider and Prankster. The Nurikabe is the next yokai here. I'll say that out of all the depictions, this one of it looking kind of like a dog absolutely enthralled me to a debilitating degree. Especially seeing as I had a wonderful idea. The fact that this looks like a puppy made me think of this big dog-like Pokemon of a massive droopy head that would flop down to become this massive adorable looking wall. The Nurikabe, if you don't know, is a wall yokai. It creates impassable walls, in some depictions it's itself that makes the wall, and for others it creates an invisible impassable wall. If you turn around from it, the Nurikabe crushes you. A bit too dark for my taste, so I wanted a big lovely free-eyed dog. Very similar to how it looks here, but playing up a bit more of the look of it being sort of a Japanese wall, with the top ears and pattern made to look like a traditional Japanese tiling. Because the head itself is so chonkerous and warlike, the rest of its body is very plain and just dog-like, a very balanced towards the head design, but makes sense when you have a head this heavy, and just always in the way. My heart swells whenever I think about this thing being a big cute dog just flopping around blocking the way and whining because it wants foods or walkies, but I can't go out and give you walkies because you're blocking the entire doorway. I went with Rock and Ghost for this good boy, although swapping Ghost out for Fairy would have also been quite fitting. Plasticabe, the wall Pokemon, a Ghost and Rock type. The large, droopy face of Plasticabe is so heavy that the Pokemon sometimes struggles to walk. It will take constant rest at any time and so it will regularly block doorways with their large face. 
Attempts to move it will be seen as playtime by Plastic Kabe, and as such, they will fall playfully onto you. Despite their nature, Plastic Kabe are incredibly friendly and caring, and love nothing more than to be around their trainer. A Plastic Kabe's tail will wag with great enthusiasm when they are happy. A legend once told of their tails being so forceful that it would whip up whirlwinds regions away. Plastic Kabe have the ability Shadow Tag. Oh, the Umi Bozu. I want to talk about One Piece so bad right now. Those who know, know, but for everyone else, read One Piece. They'll watch it, I guess, if you have a billion years. The Umi Bozu is such a menacing yokai and one of the two water spirits in this video. This one was actually kind of a triple threat. I thought it'd be fun for it to be a sort of regional grimer or perhaps some kind of convergent species. But in the end, this is its own standalone Pokemon that kind of just slightly resembles Grimer, but is also a lot bigger and maybe a bit more menacing because of that. The design, I didn't want it to be completely a silhouette like how the Umibozu is in depictions, but I thought instead it being this sort of dark gray mass that has a wave pattern that flows down it much like Grimer in both of its forms. But what sets it apart from Grimer is its very sick and disguising mustache of water that then flows into a wave arm that I'll say now is obviously designed off the great wave of Kanagawa, which I feel like everyone has seen at some point in their life. Not the like genuine artwork, but like stickers or just homages around. It's definitely one of the more famous Japanese artworks out there. Funny enough, this is about where I started to really lock in as the kids say with my Pokemon art style. And I reworked this artwork a bit more to bring it in line here. Honestly, just changing one letter from Umi Bozu to Umi Bozo is just so big brain for me. I needed to toot my own horn here. Umi Bozo, the water demon of water and dark type. A mysterious Pokemon usually only seen upon the far off seas away from land masses. They are large Pokemon said to be the embodiment of the fury of the sea. Sailors should beware sudden shifts in the waves going from calm to turbulent as Umi Bozo draws near and in a near instant decide the fate of the vessel. One large sweep of its watery arms will cause a capsizing wave to form. A legend tells that Umi Bozo can be tricked by offering it a barrel to which it will try to climb into regardless of the size of the barrel. This is why you'll see many ships have a couple of empty barrels on hand. Umi Bozo has a new ability called Turbulent Waves, which powers up the water type moves of the Pokemon and its allies. Is this another One Piece reference? Alright, I'll stop, but this one is sort of the final stage of a pseudo legendary line based off the sickening Ushioni. Why is it sickening? Well, I mean, just look at it. It's the grossest bull face you've ever seen slapped onto the booty of a spider thing and. Probably twice the size of said bull, it's just scary enough to be called a demon cow in its own right. But the fact that it poisons people in water and you contract plague from it, it's just what Dark Souls bosses are all derived from. I knew that this design would come out very literal to the yokai itself, but the actual sort of trajectory was what I wanted to focus on. This could have very easily just been a spider Pokemon's body with Taurus on it, and Honestly, that would have been kind of cool if it was kind of a myth Pokemon instead of a real Pokemon. But I wanted to live up to its name as the demon sort of bull and give it this jagged, toothy, just horrible looking grin. I went into this wanting to make an unsettling, horrific looking Pokemon, and I think I achieved it. Especially giving unsettling tufts of fur sticking out, like those fuzzy spiders and tarantulas you see. Just talking about it makes me grossed out. Meet your nasty bug and poison pseudo legendary Ushazis. Ushizis, the terrible Pokemon, a bug and poison type. Ushizis live up to their name as the terrible Pokemon. They live near beaches and sources of water and will poison said body of water to weaken their prey and will wait, striking only once the prey can no longer fight back. The poison they secrete is so potent that their entire territory slowly becomes uninhabitable. Once that happens, Ushizis will begin to find a new place to live. Plants will no longer grow in their previous homes. Luckily, an antitoxin has been made from their poison. In the past, it was thought that Ushizi's poison was a plague that would lay waste to anyone close to it. Even trainers were scolded for owning Ushizi's. 
Ush Disease has a new ability called Plague Venom, which transforms any poison status on an enemy into toxic poison. Our last two for the video I would say would be legendaries. Let's begin with the Nui first. Reading up on the Nui was so interesting because it's essentially a chimera made of a whole bunch of different creature parts, but could have also just have been a bird called the Thrush? It seemingly was able to turn into a storm cloud and just be a general menace. For some reason when I think of the Nui, I think of the one from Neo, just the absolutely horrifying creature. For mine, I wanted to make it a very similar design, being the Chimeric Pokemon. Not really a combo of any known Pokemon, a bit how Silvalli does it. I wanted it with the face of almost a mythical looking mandrel that also kind of works well as a sort of Japanese mask, like something you'd see in a Teal Mask DLC. The body was a bit more difficult. I decided to go Tiger, Chicken and Snake for the various parts, as those are the parts I mostly know the new way for. Maybe not Chicken for the feet, maybe I guess based off the Thrush. I wanted the sake to not take up too much of the detail budget here. Having a face too detailed would distract you from the main show. But I give it a slightly Hydreigon-like face for it, and I think it looks kind of cute and menacing. Tapping may be a tad controversial here, but I chose Pure Dragon. It felt very draconic to me, and it could have been so many different typings, but I thought a pure type Pokemon was kind of interesting for something like this. <laughs> Numera, the Chimera Pokemon, a dragon type. Numera were seen in ancient times as warped and sorrowful Pokemon. Their bodies thought to be a combination of other Pokemon, and its ability to float along and sound like other bird Pokemon led many to be fearful of it. In modern times, it is seen as a loyal and protective Pokemon, and the acceptance of Numera seems to have also had a positive effect on the Pokemon. Some cultures seem to now revere them as deities. Their tails have a smaller brain that allows simple problem solving and allows Numera to see all around it, making ambushes difficult, although sometimes the tail will slack off and fall asleep. Numera have the abilities Tough Claws and Levitate. I think I saved the best for last of this video, as it is one of my favourite designs I did out of this batch. Based off the Bake Kujira, or Ghost Whale, it is literally what it says on the box, a skeletal whale that swims along the ocean attacking people who hunt whales. I love that it says that ghostly fish and weird birds follow the Bucky Kujira. It gives me such Digimon vibes, if I'm being honest. But for the Pokemon, I got a lot of inspo from Houndstone for this one. A whale skeleton, but sort of surrounding a ghostly energy core that helps fill in some of the body. This one feels legendary through and through, like serious box art legendary vibes. I have no idea what the second box legendary would be, but move over Kyogre. Pretty dang obvious for this one's typing, I chose Ghost Water for it. Even though Ghost Water is the typing we've seen so, so much. I really dig this whole gravestone vertebrae idea I had for this one. Again, Houndstone gave me all the good inspo for that. So thanks Ghost Doggy, you kind of horrifying thing, you. Bakujira, the ghost whale Pokemon, a ghost and water type. A tragic Pokemon that is said to be a congregation of souls of departed whale Pokemon from being hunted. They have great malice towards hunters on the seas and enact great violence upon them. Wherever Bakujira go, it is followed by large waves filled with the souls of other water type Pokemon who are seeking revenge as well as strange rarely seen bird Pokemon upon the skies. If you see these signs upon the seas, it is too late. Bakujira can easily overturn any ship it comes into contact with, usually choosing to send the occupants to the briny depths below where they will become cursed just as Bakujira was. Bakujira have the abilities Cursed Body and Flame Body. And that's all the designs I have for this video. What'd you think? Comment down below your favourite yokai and if you'd like to see me do another one of these videos, and any yokai suggestions you'd have for said video. Also don't forget to like, sub and share the video and hit that ding ding to never miss a video. Now let's go watch some Yoko from my own new legally distinct game, Yokai Clock. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.